setting up CI CD to automatically deploy your serverless project can get really confusing. There are so many tools out there and each of them have their pros and cons and all of them are configured differently. Luckily, in today's video, I'm gonna be explaining to you how to set up my favorite, which is GitHub Actions. It's super easy to set up, super powerful, but make sure you stick around to the end as I'll be giving you one of my secret tips to make this even better. So let's jump onto the computer and see how we can set this all up. In our repo, there are a couple of things that we need to make sure are set up before we try and implement GitHub Actions. The first is that we've got a repo that uses Git and is connected to a GitHub repo. In my case, that is this repo here, which is a basic serverless repo, just using the template. And it's connected to this SLS GitHub repo, obviously in GitHub. With those two things set up already, we can start talking about how to get the actions working. There are two steps to getting a serverless repo deploying with GitHub Actions. That is creating the GitHub Actions workflow, which is the steps that it follows through to actually do the deployment, and then adding the credentials so that it has the permissions to deploy to AWS. We're going to start with the workflow. So what we need to do is we need to go into um, our folder structure. And in here, what we can do is we can create a new folder, call this dot github forward slash work flows. And in here, we can create a new file called deploy master dot yaml. Now you can write these scripts yourself and they are just yaml commands using uh, bash. But what we can do is we can actually get an example one that we can use from GitHub itself. So in our browser, if we now search for serverless GitHub actions and open the top link in here what they've got is they've got a github actions repo themselves and if we scroll down there is an example of how to use this what we can do is we can just copy this file head back into our ide and paste that all in i'll quickly talk over what's happening so it is saying whenever someone pushes to the branch of master, run this job. So that means if I push to a dev branch, nothing will happen with this job. If we scroll down, the job says is going to have a task of deploying and this just runs on Ubuntu. Here we say we want to run it for node 14 and node 16. I'm actually going to delete the 16 version because we're just using node 14. So we want to keep it like that. In here, it checks our code from GitHub into this uh, Ubuntu server that is running our deployment, sets up node, runs npm ci, which is just doing an install of all of your dependencies and then runs serverless deploy. By default, it will just run the serverless deploy command. But if you wanted to do other things like setting the region, you could do that in here by passing in a region flag with dash dash region and then like EU West one. I would probably advise doing this as little as possible. And if you want to set a region, just set it in the main serverless configuration uh, as a default. It is definitely worth taking note that by default, this deployment workflow will use the serverless version three because that is what is defined here on this line. If you want to use the serverless version two or version one, all you need to do is change it here from V2 
uh, sorry, 2v2 from version 3. That will then use the correct framework and your deployment should work as expected. This repo is actually a version 3 repo, so I'm going to change it back to version 3 so that we can continue. The last part here is the environment variables. So this is how we are going to get access to deploy to our AWS account. So you can use serverless access keys, but I'm going to show you how to use the other me method, which is AWS access C keys and secret access keys. So what we need to do for this is we need to actually create a user in our AWS account to do the deployment from the GitHub actions. So if we head over to our browser and into our AWS account and go to IAM, in here what we need to do is we need to find the users section and we need to add a new user. In here, we need to give this user a name. I'm gonna call this GitHub Actions User and say that they are given programmatic access. In here, we want to attach an existing policy directly to this user of administrator access. That means that GitHub Actions has the ability to do whatever it needs. We can skip through this until we create the user. But when you get to this page, make sure you do not close it because we need this access key and secret key, but is only shown at this point and disappears afterwards. If we look in our code, it says that the environment of AWS access key is defined by secrets.aws access key. So if we go into our GitHub account and then go to settings, which is the last menu option hidden behind my head. And then we scroll down to secrets and actions. We can create some secrets on this repo, which can then be used inside CI CD. I'm gonna create a new repo secret the name is going to be AWS Access Key ID, which you can copy from here. And now the value, if we go into AWS, we can access, copy the access key ID and paste that as the value. We can now repeat this, but this time the AWS secret access key is going to be the name paste that in there. And now we need to click on show, copy that and then hide it back into our GitHub. We can paste our value into there and hit add to add that secret. Now we can see that there is an AWS access key ID and AWS secret access key, both available inside this repo for CI CD. When we deploy this, these environment variables will be set using those secrets so that serverless can deploy to our AWS account. We can now actually save this change to our master branch by running git add dot. Just check that with git status and we are creating one new file. And now git commit minus M and the message is going to be something like add GitHub Actions Workflow. Now that we've created that, we can push. And now this is pushed, we can go back into our GitHub account. And if we go to the Actions menu, we can see that we have one action that has just started running. It takes a minute or two to actually run. And I'll get back to you once that has finished. So that has now finished running and there are two ways we can check what has happened. If we go into our actual workflow itself, we can see that there is one job completed. And in that one job, there was a single deployment using node 14. And here you can actually see the logs that happened at each stage. 
The interesting stage for us is probably the serverless deploy one. As you can see, there are a load of comments and at the bottom there is the final output. So here we have the URL that we could call as well as the function that was generated. If we were to go into Postman, we'd be able to send a message to that URL and get back the expected hello response. The other way that we can check is by going back into our AWS account and searching for Lambda inside this lam inside our lambdas, we should, if we change our region to northeast, find GitHub Actions dash Dev Hello. The region, that, the reason that it was deployed to North Virginia is that I didn't set any other region, and the default is North Virginia. But you should find those in your region if you added one to your serverless repo. Now you know how to set up automatic deployment of your serverless project using GitHub Actions. This makes your life so much easier. All you need to do is make a change and either merge it or push it to a branch and it will be automatically deployed. My favorite tip for taking this to the next level is to have multiple different scripts for deploying to different environments. So a development environment can be pushed to from your dev branch with some small tests. With a QA or integration uh, branch, you can then deploy to your environment and then also do some smoke tests or something similar to it. And the same with production. This gives you the flexibility to both develop quickly, especially when you've got an agile team, but also have security knowing Anything that is going into QA or production is really robust. If you want to learn out how to do all of this in more detail, then check out this video here.